Today we play with fire and take a first look at the G1. After a long break, the games come and getting sick afterwards, I am back with my first impressions of the G1. My verdict will be that it will be way worse than expected and that I cannot recommend it in the current state. Before we start, please note that my unit is not a retail unit and it was displayed at the Gamescom. This might not resemble the quality of the final product and I cannot 100% make sure that it did not get any defect during the exhibition. Before I start my rant, let's start with the positive, because there is a lot of positive to say. First, as mentioned, I got this unit to show it at the Gamescom. I had the G1 running for the whole 5 days, 10 hours a day. It was running Horizon Zero Dawn at 1080p high settings, utilizing quite a bit of power of the system. Once set up, the unit was rock solid during the whole exhibition and it still is. Second, once set up and having the right drivers installed, it worked well with my Intel WinMax 2. That means I can confirm the compatibility with non-AMD devices, which are not officially supported by GPD anymore. When it comes to the new WinMax 2, the compatibility is superb via USB 4. Once I plug in the cable, it takes a brief moment and the external display gets recognized. I do not like Oculink, but this video shall not be part of the Oculink Wars, so all I say in regards of Oculink is that it works perfectly fine and stable as advertised. Currently, you need to reboot the device to connect to Oculink, but someone is already working on a script to make that easier. Also, I like a lot how you can use SmartShift to adjust the TDP if connected via Oculink. The third positive is performance. The performance of this small device is superb. It can play pretty much any game at 1080p 60fps high settings. That however is the minimum I'd say, so I did not do many tests in that regard, but if it's not the most taxing game out there, 1440p or higher frame rate should be no problem at all. One last positive we shall not forget to mention is the look and feel and the build quality. The housing, the top and the bottom are metal and the device feels super solid and high quality. Once you take this out of the box or hand it over to someone, the first impression based on the build quality will be very very good. Oh, and that doesn't change over time, so this still feels pretty good. Okay, now let's come to the negative. The first one is the port placement. No worries, I have discussed that in another video already and I do not want to waste too much time with it. The short story is that the power and the video outports are located at the back and the video imports are at the front. Now if I place that dock somewhere on my desktop below my screen, this forces me to have a cable sticking out at the front cluttering my desktop. If all the ports were at the back, like it is the case on my dock, I could hide all the cables and let the input cable show up where I need it. Second, there is another complaint I have raised before. The G1 has a small power switch here at the front, which is not permanent, so I cannot permanently turn this on or off. That means Whenever I want to use the G1, I have to press that button here. This is very inconvenient as I am used to having one of those multi-plugs. Every device has its own switch and I turn it on or off via that control panel. The G1 cannot be controlled that way and requires its own power switch to be pressed. That becomes especially problematic if I want to place the whole dock behind my screen to work around the cable issue. 
That switch hinders me from hiding the dock somewhere because I, if I want to use the dock I must be able to reach that switch. Combining both the port placement and the mandatory switch makes the G1 very inconvenient to use in a setup like mine. Let's finally come to the main complaint and that is fan noise. It's not just loud, it's ear explosion loud. There is no way you want this on your desk while it's running. At least not if you prefer hearing the game sound instead of fan noise. If you are a fan noise addict, the whole story changes. The fan of the G1 is way louder than the fan of the Winmax 2 at 100% speed. I tested that at the desk about 1 meter away from me. There is no chance I want to use this. In a second test I used a 2 meter USB 4 cable, connected it to my Winmax 2 and played on the internal screen. Even 2 meters away the G1 is louder than the Winmax 2 would be when running at high fan speeds while holding it in my hands. If you use Oculink for the internal screen, the cable will most likely be shorter, bringing the fan even closer to you. To demonstrate the difference, I recorded a few tests. What I did was, I used my smartphone to record the decibel. I am aware that the measurement is not 100% accurate and that the values might be a little off. However, the absolute values are not what is important here, but the difference. As I have a unit which runs at 120 Watt, I made a test and reduced the total TDP via Oculink to 80 Watt. That means that the G1 and the Winmax 2 combined will run at 80 Watt TDP, which is lower than the 100 Watt the retail units are sold at. Still, the G1 feels and is louder than the Winmax 2. As you can see, the G1 is way louder than the Winmax 2. That is true, close to the unit and a little less than 1 meter away from it. I investigated the matter a little further and took the unit apart. My first attempt was to apply PTM 7950. 
The tests you have seen are already done with the PTM applied. It did not help to reduce the fan noise a lot. The only small effect the PTM7950 had was that it takes a few seconds longer until the unit reaches its maximum sound level. If we take a look at the housing we can see that half of the main intake is blocked by a grid applied below the main grid. I consider that design to be a bit stupid. However, I investigated that, took the PCB out of its housing and run the noise test with the PCB being out of its housing. The result is basically the same. So I decided to leave that grid in place and the unit as is. If we look at the Winmax 2, we can see that there is also a small grid below the main grid. However, as you can see, the main area where the fan is sucking in air is spared out. So why on earth is the main intake on that device blocked? If that second grid is meant to prevent dirt from entering the device, that's pretty much useless because we have some big holes at the sides of the device. What I also discovered is that even without the housing applied, the G1 makes quite an audible noise while being idle. I can clearly hear the noise of the fan when being one meter away. The Max 2 as a comparison is absolutely quiet and not audible at all from that distance. That is the point which made me doubt that my unit is in good condition. During the Gamescom, I took the G1 with me to my room each evening. Maybe something during the transport has damaged the fan so that it does not sit perfectly in place anymore. I'm talking about the interiors of the fan and not about the fan itself. As I had no chance to test the G1 before the exhibition and I do not have a retail unit as a comparison, I can neither deny nor confirm this hypothesis. Let's do some further investigation and check that special innovative fan design GPD advertises. They claim that the fan is sucking in air from the toe, remember, most of the toe is blocked, and from the sides of the device. If we check the fan, we see that there is no special fan, but it's the same design as used on the Winmax 2, with the intake being that round area. So basically the main intake would still be that semi-blocked hole and not the sides. To verify this, I did something you should not do and brought some fire near my unit. At the side where the air comes out, my fire gets blown out super quickly. That verifies that the air pressure is super high and that the heat somehow gets transported out. Like I said, the device is running rock solid at its specified TDP. If I check the intake, there is very little air around the hole and pretty much none at the sides. I am very much aware that this is no scientific way to measure this. However, I highly doubt that there is some super innovative cooling technology inside this device. The holes at the side are maybe there to compensate for that tiny blocked main hole. Do not expect any miracle out of the cooling of that device. I call that advertisement to be marketing crap. So what is my verdict? If we look at the build quality, stability and ease of use, the G1 delivers what it promises. The performance is superb and all I can wish for. Unfortunately, the device has some huge drawbacks which outweigh the positive. My opinion on port placement and that power switch is highly subjective, but for me, both design choices 
introduce a huge inconvenience. What moves the device from inconvenient to unusable is the fan noise. It is way louder than the fan of the Winmax 2 and even if the G1 runs capped at 80 watt TDP, it is so loud that I do not want to use this eGPU. The only way I can see this to be acceptable is if you are playing with a headset. However, when playing with regular speakers or in public with people around, I do not consider the G1 to be usable, at least not that specific unit. What makes the G1 even less attractive to me is that I realized that my Winmax 2 can play pretty much any game at 1080p 30fps medium or high settings. As someone who is used to playing at 30fps for his whole life, the G1 offers even less benefit than I first anticipated. Going from 30 to 60 is not worth that super high noise level. As sad as it is, but at my current point of view, every single of my three Winmax 2 units offers more value to me than the G1 does. I'm so unsure if I want to keep this or not, as with the current noise level it is absolutely useless for me. The only chance I see is that my fan is somehow faulty and a new one can save the day. My conclusion is that GPD forced the size to be as tiny as possible. To keep the noise a little lower, GPD delivers the retail units with a BIOS that caps the TDP at 100 w instead of the advertised 120 w That fix shows that cooling and noise was an afterthought and not properly thought out from the beginning. For me, the G1 is a nice first try and I put it in the same, actually worse, spot as the Winmax 1. Increase the size a little, arrange the ports better and implement a proper cooling and you'll get a fantastic eGPU. Right now, if you are not in the desperate need of an eGPU and the noise situation does not improve for the retail units, stay away from the G1. I hope this was useful for you and that my lengthy talk about fan noise wasn't too boring. See you next time. Bye bye.